down the uh, back down the old garage. It's been a while, it's been a little while. Um, and if you, as you've just seen, we've got the head all cleaned up now. Um, <laughs> gone over, the, not really gone over the bottom too harshly. Just went with a um, a rag, uh, a doodah microfiber cloth, and a um, a bit of brake cleaner on there. And then we went a bit madder, a bit more with the. Um, Face in here, obviously cleaned all that back, cleaned all the ports out right in there. I don't know how well you can see because of the light, but cleaned all that out and got rid of all the crap out of there from where we did the um, the porting. Obviously, you can see we got that for ported. And then all, obviously, all the top of here all cleaned up. Uh, we did the same with the gasket faces up here, got them all cleaned up real nice. Um, and then we've got obviously the inlet flange all, all cleaned up, sorted and, and ready for a, a new gasket on there. So that's all good to go. Um, the other thing I did, like I did that last week, um, that little time lapse you saw, I did that last weekend, um, and then I've just had it sitting in a bucket of degreaser uh, for the past couple of days, and then I've just uh, just hit it with a jet wash um, and rinsed it all out and let it dry off, um, and it's come up a treat, nice treat. So what we're going to be doing tonight, um, part two, I also cleaned up all the valves. Um, you see they're all a bit crusty, so I've given them a, a little once over. I've not been too harsh on them because I know they've got a, they've got a hardened coating on. So I don't want to strip too much of that off. Um, the exhaust valves have come up really nice, really nice and clean. Um, all the stems and everything's nice and nice and clean though. So they're ready to go back in with the the new ST, not these springs. So these are these are the standard springs. They're a bit, they're quite soft. Um, they're going in with the ST one seventy springs, which are meant to have a uh, higher seat pressure, obviously for the turbo to stop the um, valve float. And uh, that leads us on then to turbo. Obviously, those of you on Instagram would have already seen this, but the turbo for Felicity turned up um, and it's a beast, absolute beast. It's a little bit bigger than I was, it's not really a little bit bigger than I expected. I say it's a little bit bigger than I was expecting. I knew fully well what I was ordering and I had all the measurements before I ordered it, but it just, you know, one of those things when you have it in your head, how big it's going to be. And then when I got it out of the box, I was a bit like, oh, well, it's a bit bigger than I thought. Um, but we're going to roll with it anyway. Um, it might not be a hundred percent for um, for turbo build 1.0. Um, it might be it might be a bit laggy on the bottom end and stuff. I mean, we'll try and put a little bit more timing in the bottom end to keep keep the um, keep the spool times down and stuff. But it might be a bit laggy. I mean, we have got um, the ECU is capable of running anti lag and launch control and stuff as well. So in regards to racing and stuff, we will be able to leave the line on boost. And that kind of thing. It might just be the round town driving and stuff. Might be a bit bit laggy on the bottom end, but um, yeah, that's for version one point oh. Uh, obviously, version two point oh. There's obviously we're going to forge the bottom end and stuff, and um, it will be a lot more suited for the the power that we're trying to look for in that second uh, second build. But but yeah, that's uh, that's where we're going with it. That's roughly it's just in there on an upturned jack stand at the moment. Um, but that's roughly where it's going to go. Uh, if I just whip this cover off um, and just drop the head back on the block there for you guys, I might have to do this. I don't know if I can do this one handed or not. Yeah, there we go. So if I just drop that back in there for you guys, just so that you can uh, get a vague idea of uh, of how it looks and how it's all going to fit. Oops, that's the head gaskets. Move those out of the way. Um, yeah, so that's kind of let's put this widen it out a bit. Um, yeah, so that's roughly how it's going to all sit in the bay there. Um, obviously, you'll have my plan is to put the the air filter, obviously in here, just behind the headlight, um, and then obviously for track days and stuff, we just whip the headlight out, and you've got your direct cold air straight onto the filter and in. Um, and then the the outlet, obviously boost side, cold side is going to come out of come out of here on a ninety degree, and then onto a bit of a forty five degree, um, and then you'll be able to see. Uh, just in there on the bulkhead I've started cutting out two holes um, and we have got a aluminium charge cooler that's going to sit inside inside the footwell there um, and then obviously it will just come out of there back onto the manifold which is there kind of up and in there somewhere um, and then exhaust we have got uh, two options with the exhaust and we are going to use um, we are going to use both options with the exhaust um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a hood exit which is literally just going to be um, so what, what we've got here we've got the four bolt uh, the four bolt pattern 
um, on there. So I'm going to get a four pole to V-band adapter to go on there, just to a three inch V-band. Um, then we'll have a V-band here, and then it will just literally be a 90 up with a teardrop cut on the top, straight up and out. Um, and then we're also going to make up an exhaust that's obviously V-band here. It's going to go down there and then obviously through there, past the uh, past the drive shaft, along and then out the uh, out the side exit back here somewhere. Um, the idea being is that, I mean, in theory, a hood exit on this car, as long as it doesn't protrude, protrude the bonnet too much, is legal. Um, the things they pick up on, obviously, is it louder than stock? Well... There was, you know, these weren't exactly quiet cars to start with, and it's not stock, it's not a stock engine and bits and pieces, so we could kind of get around that. It won't protrude the bonnet so much, so as long as it doesn't cause harm to anyone that I might be running over, although I've always thought that's quite a, a silly thing, because if you're going to hit someone, you're going to hit them anyway, it doesn't matter, really matter about the exhaust. But, um, and then the other one, obviously, is emissions. Now, obviously, being the age of the car it is, it doesn't have a, um, a standard to adhere to, it's just kind of a visual, make sure it's not smoking, that sort of that sort of thing um so in theory in theory it is it will pass an mot um but i don't know mot discretion and then it's just it's pure bait for the yeah for the old traffic cops they'll love it um so the plan is we we have that for things like when we go drag racing and stuff the other thing is as well it probably will be quite loud um and obviously track days you have to adhere to um adhere to the uh, decibel readings and stuff so for certain track days it, it's not ideal um so but we're going to have that as option one and then obviously option two down and out will be i'll probably put two maybe put a resonator at the front and then just a box at the back under the seat before it goes out the side there um as a more sort of sensible quiet exhaust road road going exhaust that kind of thing um but obviously if we have a v-band there nice and easy to uh, nice and easy to swap over so um yeah you have to let me know what you what you think of the old uh Wuhan whirly boy there, El Turbski. Obviously, it is a Chinese special for anyone that hasn't worked that out already. Um, it is a an eBay, an eBay whirly boy. Um, but for the money it cost, you know, if I have to replace it every couple of years, I'm not that bothered at this stage. Um, once the car's all up and running and, and stuff, I might look at uh, uh, investing in a more expensive turbo. But for the time being, that'll do the trick, and that's all we need. So. Uh, yeah, um, we'll crack on to what the rest of what this video was about and we are going to get our valves all lapped in and get our head all ready. Um, I have had a couple of post, uh, parcels turn up in the post. Obviously, uh, Victor Ryan's gasket set. Um, we have got two head gaskets and we are going with a decom plate, which um, I've actually just ordered from DA Engineering, DA Performance Engineering. I've just ordered that before this video. Uh, so that will hopefully turn up in a couple of days and we can get that all whipped back on. Um, and then over here... Again, not necessarily necessary. Oh, that's, a, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Not necessarily necessary, but um, I thought seeing as we're going decom plate to start with, um, and we might be looking at running quite a lot more boost um, on engine 2.0. I thought we'd get it out of the way and buy it now. Um, so we have got ARP head studs um, rather than head bolts. Um, so obviously all genuine, genuine ARP, brand new um, to go. To go on there that also does mean i haven't got to buy head bolts every time we do a every time we do a gasket swap or, or whatever which to be fair i mean probably the the the, heck, the gaskets and decom plate are, are are well above the boost levels that the bottom end will take um to blow one of those out i'm more likely i think to lose a rod or piston um to be honest but just in case you know it's full belt and braces they're on the market i mean i paid 210 quid for them but I've got them now, and wherever we start to go with the direction of this car, um, is uh, that should that should cover it, you know. Um, so that's it. I'll stop waffling. Um, we'll start cracking on. We'll get this all uh, all sorted, um, and then we'll uh, yeah, then we'll look at pulling the block and getting the head and everything bolted on, cam belt kit and everything. I'll, I'll order that this evening. Cam belt kit, pulleys, idlers, new water pump, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I'll crack on. Let's get on with it. Yeah, so what I thought I'd just show you the way I'm doing this because I'm not doing it your standard way uh, where you have a little sucker that you put on the on the valve and you have to backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. Um, little tip that I found, uh, I got off of YouTube actually, um, watching the PFI guys, uh, All Motor Fong. Um, really great little tip. So what I've got here is a, uh, a center punch um, and a little bit of vac line. I'm sure you can see where this is going, but I'll pop the vac line on the end of the uh, end of the center punch there. Uh, I'm going to get my valve 
Uh, so this is number two exhaust valve. Um, I'm going to get myself a uh, reasonably generous um, uh, amount of grinding paste. This is copied in the hold out that it's relevant to. Uh, and then I'm going to push the back line onto the end of the uh, onto the end of the valve on the opposing side of the head. Um, and then I like to just give it a quick spin by hand just to spread the paste around the seat face. And then I get 18 volt battery drill with forward and reverse. Um, you don't want to cut the seat in the same direction all the time. You want to backwards and forwards it and jump it in and out a bit. But then basically it's just a case of pull the trigger. Don't go too mad with it. between let me uh, put you guys on a stand zoom and I'll show you the difference between so this is one we haven't done you can see with the, the dirty and stuff and then that's the one hang on that's the one we have done now you see we've got nice clean valve seats so I'm gonna go ahead and crack on and do that with all 16 um, and then I will catch up with you in a bit seen in the old time lapse all 16 have been uh, lapped and cleaned and, uh, and are now looking pretty pretty darn good for uh, a little uh, garage lapping job obviously no no machinery no CNC in here just a battery drill and uh, a bit of patience so yeah really happy with that uh, really happy with the how uh, some of these valves have come out as well focus on those have got a real nice smooth seat we'll just put a bit of crap on it Real nice smooth seat all the way around on those. Um, as you can see, we've got some nice, nice big ports on the exhaust there, which, uh, which I'm happy about. And then, like I said, we're not we're not actually doing anything with the inlet. So, uh, so there we go. Right now, I'm going to uh, I'm going to start bashing these valves in. With uh, we have got. Uh, let me just get this get this part out now. We have got ST1170 springs in there. I mean, these aren't. It's still springy, still moving by hand, so they're not really, really hard springs, but that and then uh, matching retainers. There is a little bag of collets in there as well somewhere, but I have got in uh, in my box over here, I've got some spare collets as well. So plenty of those to go in. So uh, I'm gonna put it back on the side and we'll crack on with that. So guys, before I crack on, just another quick tip for you. Obviously we're doing uh, stem seals. Um, Victor Ryan's again, back of stem seals, orange for the exhaust, green for the inlet, cold side. Little tip for getting these back on. I've got a uh, 19 mil impact socket here, and uh, that slips nicely over the top of the stem seal, so that when you drop it on top of the kit, drop that on top of the socket, give it a push, and that's it. Home, simple as that. Just Resealed, respringed, re retainered head. Uh, took me quite a while. It's one of those really tedious jobs that you can't really rush. Uh, it's just one of the, it just takes the time it takes, doesn't it? And the, getting the collets in is always one of those things that's really, really painful. Uh, but yeah, it's all in. I'll give you guys a quick look. And I'm sure you've all seen a head before though. But yeah, I mean, that's it. They're all in. ST170 springs, retainers, collets. And, uh, and then on this side, obviously, our valves all cleaned up. All, uh, all reseated and ready to go, and uh, hopefully ready to take a bit of boost. Um, that's it. I'm going to leave it off here because this video is getting sort of to get into that length now. Um, but like I say, I have ordered the um, ordered the decon plate for the head there. Um, I've got all the gaskets and stuff there for this. Is uh, it's got gaskets for everything, everything in there. Got, whoops. Drop those. I uh, got you know head gaskets in there, inlet gaskets, K 
cam seal gaskets, rock cover gaskets, everything I need to um, to get this built up. So as soon as um, as soon as the decom plate turns up, and uh, yeah, as soon as that turns up, we can get the the head bolted to the block. Um, I just need to order the cam belt kit tonight. Obviously, to get all the cam belt and water pump and everything back on. Um, but apart from that, we're uh, we're trucking along quite nicely with this. As always, guys, like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you what you're thinking. I must say, actually, after I did ZTech video part one, um, subscriptions and views went through the roof. Um, so, I mean, obviously, I'm making more content that you guys are interested in with regards to the engine and stuff rather than the rest of the car. Um, so that's great. But, I mean, for those of you that liked, shared and subscribed on that one and, uh, and got, me some, got me some more people kind towards the page, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And uh, like I say, I'll see you in part three once we've got the decomplate and we'll get it all bolted up. Cheers, guys. Catch you later.